In this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can use Affinity Designer to create this logo design where we have a shield and laurels going around it, and on the inside of the shield we have some kind of iconic depiction. Now you don't necessarily have to use a horse for what I'm doing here, you can use whatever depiction you'd like, but for this demonstration I'll just be using this horse as an example. And then I'll also be showing you how to create these monotone variations of it as well. Before we get started though, if you want to learn more about how Affinity Designer works, be sure to check out my Affinity Designer Masterclass. It's a collection of over 80 videos where we go over all of the tools and features in Affinity Designer, and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work, kind of like how I will do in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me whenever you need it. And now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to open up a new document by pressing Control N or Command N. And the settings I'm going to use, I want to create a document with a page width of 1080 and a height of 1080. So it's a 1080 by 1080 document. And I will click Create. And I'm going to come up here and turn on Snapping by clicking on that magnet icon. And I'm going to come over here to my Shapes tool, hold a click over that, and I'm looking for the Triangle tool. I'm going to hold my Shift key and click and drag to draw a triangle. And I'm going to click this button up here that says Convert to Curves. And then I'll grab my Selection tool and let's flip this vertically and let's center this on the page horizontally and vertically. And I will make this black so I can see it better. And now I'm going to add a new anchor point in the center of the top side of this triangle. So I'll grab my uh, Direct Selection tool and I'm going to come over here to the center of the, of the uh, top edge of this triangle until the cursor snaps to the center of the page. You'll see that green guide that indicates that you're in the center of the page. And just go ahead and click once to add a new anchor point there. And then I'll hold shift and click and drag this up a little bit like that. And then I'll take this left edge right here and just click and drag that down a little bit to dip that in. I'm going to hold the shift key and bring this node straight out to the right about that far. And then I'll take this node right here and I'll bring this down about that far. And in fact, I'm going to bring this up a little more. That's not quite as high as I'd like it to be. If you're going to adjust this, just make sure to hold shift while doing so, so that you can maintain the placement on the vertical axis. And I'm just going to adjust this a little bit. And now we could take this bottom left edge and click and drag to bring this out a little bit. And I'll click on this node so we get this handle. I'm going to hold the shift key and bring this node straight down like that. And then I'll take this handle down here and I'll bring this out to the left a little bit at an angle, about that much. I'll maybe I'll bring this down a little further. And then I'm going to click and drag over this node over here on the right and press the delete key to get rid of that. And then I will come over here to my corners tool. And I'm going to take this node right here and then just click and drag this in. And I'm going to change the corner type to concave, which is this one right here. If you hover your cursor over it, a label will uh, indicate which type it is. I'll click concave. It gives us a nice little rounded corner in there. And then I will click the bake appearance button to finalize that. And now I'm going to grab my selection tool and I'm going to make a copy of this and mirror it over to the other side. So I'm going to hold the alt key or if you're on Mac it would be the option key and then click and drag and then hold the shift key to lock it onto the horizontal axis and then just flip this vertically and then snap it over here to the other half. And now we can select both of these and we can just merge them. We can click this button up here to add them together and it merges them together like that. And you could take your nodes tool and adjust the placement of this if you'd like. I'm not quite happy with how high that was. So I'll bring that down a little bit and that right there looks a lot better. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create some copies of this design to create the outline going around the shield. So to do that, I'm going to click on the object. Let's come over here to the layers menu, right click it and go to duplicate. And I'm going to make this copy white and I'm going to grab the offset tool or the contour tool which is located over here and I'll take this little handle down here and bring this to the left just to scale that down or to decrease the offset a little bit. About that far looks pretty good. I'll click the bake appearance button to finalize that and I'm going to repeat that process. I'm going to right click that duplicated copy and click duplicate and I'll make this duplicated copy black. We'll go back to the contour tool and I will bring this one down even more about that far. That looks pretty good. And once again, I'll click the Bake Appearance button. So right now we have a white shield up against a black shield. What I want to do is turn that white area into negative space. So to do that, I'll come over here to the Layers menu. I'm going to click on the white shield and then hold Shift and click on the black shield underneath it. And then I'm going to click this button up here that says Subtract. 
and now we will have negative space in there. It's hard to see up against the white canvas, but you can see over here in the layers menu, the preview icon indicates that that's just an outline now. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring a graphical element in here to subtract from the, uh, the inside of the shield. As I mentioned in my uh, introduction, we're gonna use a horse for this demonstration. So to access this, I'm gonna come up here to window and I'm gonna go to stock and the stock menu should open up in a separate window. And let me just clear out my previous entries from when I was setting up this tutorial. We're gonna set up so that we have Pixabay as the directory and I'm gonna choose vector, so I'll tick that box. And then I'll just type in here horse and press enter and you'll see we have all these different horses to choose from. The one that I used is right here. I'm just gonna click and drag that onto the canvas. Then we can close out of the, close out of that panel. And in order to use this, we're gonna to have to open it up in another tab because right now it came into the document as an embedded document. So I'll come over here to the layers menu, double click on that thumbnail, and then it'll open it up in a new tab. And I'm gonna right click the, the, uh, the graphic and go to copy and then close out of this tab. And then I'll just delete this. And then I'm just gonna paste this in by pressing Command V or Control V. And there we go, there we have a usable horse that we can now subtract. So I'm gonna hold Control and Shift and scale this down. I'm gonna make this white. And I wanna place this over the shield in such a way. Let me first turn off snapping. I wanna place this over the shield in such a way that the subject is touching the edges of the shield. Otherwise we won't get the effect that we're going for. So I'm gonna scale this up so that the head is protruding from the shield there on the top. And I want the, the hoof over here going over the right side of the shield. And then down here, I want the same effect. So let me scale this up a little more. There we go. See what I'm going for here is we want to have two sides like this one color and that one color. And in order to create this effect, we need to make sure that we're going over the size of the shield in order for that to work. So once that's in place, I think that looks pretty good. Maybe I'll scale this up a little more. That looks a lot better. And now what I will do is I will hold shift and click on the shield so that I have both the horse and the shield selected. You can see here in the layers menu, I have both of these selected. And then I'll click the difference button up here in the Boolean operations or the subtract option. And that's gonna subtract it. And now what I will do is I will just separate all of this. I'll break this all apart into separate pieces by going to layer, geometry, and separate curves. And now you can click off of that and you can see these are all individual pieces we can click on. So I wanna make this left half of the shield a different color. I'm gonna use a gold shade here. You're free to use whatever colors you'd like, obviously. I'm just gonna use gold for my demonstration though. I'll make this side the same color, so I'll just use my dropper and sample that selection. And also this little piece over here, that got left out, so I'm gonna make that the same color. And then I'll do the same thing over here, only using a different color. But I, uh, So I'll click on this, and I'm gonna use blue, or a deep navy blue for this shade something like that. And then I'll do the same thing right here. Let me sample that color. There we go. And then we can't forget about this little piece in here as well. So I'll click on that, use the same color. And I'm gonna make the outline of the shield the same shade of blue that I was working with here. So I'll just click on that sample color and there we go. So now what we're gonna do is create the laurel wreath going around the logo design and the star in the middle as well. So let me take all of this, I'm gonna select all of it and group it together by going to layer and selecting group. And then I'll just put this over here in the top left. I'll even scale this down a little bit so it's not in the way, because we're gonna need a bit of space for what we're about to do next. And to create the laurel, or you know what, first I should create the star. Let me hold a click over the triangle tool here and grab the star tool. And then I'll hold shift and click and drag to create a star and I'll click the Convert to Curves button, and I'll just place this over here at the bottom center of the logo here. I'm gonna hold Shift and scale this down or up as needed. There we go. And then I'll click both of these and I will open my alignment menu and just make sure that they are centered vertically like that. Okay, so now we will make the laurel wreath. I'm gonna grab my circle tool. I'm gonna to hold the Shift key, click and drag to draw a circle. And I'm gonna come over here to the layers menu and bring the opacity of that down in half, or roughly in half. Then I'll grab my selection tool and I wanna make a copy of this circle by holding the option key on Mac or Alt on Windows and clicking and dragging. 
and then holding the shift key to lock it onto the vertical axis. And I'm gonna bring this copy all the way over here to the right like that. And what we're paying attention to in here is the intersecting area. We want a nice thin leaf shape like that. You don't want it to be, you don't want it to be too wide like that. You want it to be much thinner. So something like that right there looks pretty good. I'll select both of those now. I will choose the intersect Boolean operation. And now I can take the opacity of that and bring it back up to 100%. And I'm just gonna hold shift and rotate this around two steps like that. So we start up here, I go left, one, two, counterclockwise. And then I'm gonna duplicate this, hold alt or option, click and drag, hold shift, bring this one over here like that. And then I will flip this horizontally and then I will adjust its position as needed. So I'll put this right about here. And now I'm gonna select well, first I'm gonna select one of these and make it a different color. So I'll make this the same shade of gold I was working with over here. So I'll just sample that color and add that in. So we have one being the blue color and the other being the other gold color. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select both of these objects and then I'm gonna hold option and click and drag this up and then hold the shift key, bring it up about that far, rotate it slightly and then bring it to the right slightly like that. And then we're gonna repeat that process over and over by pressing Command J or Control J if you're on Windows. So I'll keep pressing that until we get a bunch of copies like that. And that's what we're going for. And that right there looks pretty good. I'm gonna take this copy right here and I'm just gonna hold Option and click and drag it. And then I'll just rotate this around and I'll place this in the center like that. And now we have our laurel wreath, or one half of it anyway. So I'll select all of these. We'll go to Layer Group. Let me rotate this around by holding shift and moving it like that. I'll scale this down. And let me take this logo and place it in the center of the document, vertically and horizontally. Or you know what, let me put that back. I have to group it with the star. Let me select both of those and go to layer group. And then I will center that on the canvas. Let me scale that up. And then I'll take this laurel wreath and put it down here. And then I'll scale this up and down as needed. And I'm even gonna rotate this around just to make it fit the contour of the shield a little better. Let me scale that down. And once that's in place, you can make a duplicate copy by holding Alt or Option, clicking and dragging, holding Shift, then releasing the clicks, and then flipping it horizontally like this. And I'll move this over like that. And to ensure that these are centered up on the page, I'm gonna hold shift and click on the other one so we have them both selected. Let's group them together by going to layer group and make sure we have that centered on the page as well. And now we have the logo portion done anyway. So now at this final step, we're just gonna add some text in here like I did here for the, uh, for the thumbnail design. So let me grab my text tool. I'm gonna click and drag to create some text and I'm gonna use all caps and write logo design just for this demonstration. I'm gonna press Command A to select all the text and I'm gonna change the font of this to Kirsty. This is a free font if you want to download it. I find it looks really well for this sort of thing. And I'll scale this down. And I'm gonna make this the same shade of blue that I was working with previously. And let me center this on the page. There we go. And then I'm gonna create some subtext beneath it. So the subtext would be like a tagline or something that you see down here. So to do that, let me grab my text tool again. I'll just press T on the keyboard to grab that. And now I'm just gonna write Affinity Designer. And I'm gonna change the font of that to just a plain sans font. I'm gonna use Enter. and I will use the black weight. And then I'm gonna scale this down and I'm gonna place some spacing between those letters. To place the spacing, you wanna make sure you have all the letters highlighted like I do here, and then just hold your option key or your alt key if you're on Windows and just use your right arrow key to add some spacing in there. And then I will take this and place it in the center or let me use the alignment tool to center that. And then I'll scale this down just a little bit. I'm gonna hold the command key to scale that down proportionately from the center. And I will make this the same shade of gold that I had for my shield. And there we go. And at this point, the logo is finished. And the good thing about 
constructing the logo the way that we did is that it's already set to be used in monotone variations. So if I select everything here and I go to layer group, I can scale this down. And if I hold option or alt and click and drag to create a copy, you can see I can turn this any color I want. I can make this black or green or whatever. And we can make it black like that. And there you have a monotone copy and the same for white. If I make a copy and bring it over here, I can make this white and now you can see it up against the dark backdrop. And by the way, if you can't see anything that goes off of your canvas, you can just toggle that off and on with the vertical bar key or the forward slash key. So uh, there you go. If you found this lesson useful, then consider checking out my Affinity Designer Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Affinity Designer and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. Kind of like how I did in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. And best of all, there's no monthly membership fees. You just pay $17 one time and you're in for life. I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. As always, thanks for watching.